Mr. Khachikian, uh, the most sensitive issue in Armenia is, is the destiny of our captives in Azerbaijan. Our compatriots are tortured by inhuman regime of Aliyev, and it seems that the tools of international humanitarian law are powerless. It also seems that international community does not have adequately strong attitude to tackle this problem. Uh, first of all, uh, what is your point of view regarding this issue? Well, I, I agree. I, I believe it's a very serious issue of, of great importance to both the individuals, their families, uh, and to the Armenian nation. And it, it reflects uh, the Azeri regime's ongoing uh, brutality, their inhumanity, and their flouting of international law. Um, it is clearly extraordinarily unacceptable. And uh, collectively, we need to bring to bear every resource that we can to rectify this situation. Uh, <clears throat> I, I agree also that uh, the international community is not as concerned about this as it should. And it is part of our collective advocacy effort through our high tide um, offices and, and the local high tide affiliates to raise that awareness and to create a sense of urgency. Here in the United States, the um, high tide office in Washington uh, has been able to get a resolution introduced into the House of Representatives uh, and is gathering support for that to uh, call upon Azerbaijan to account for and return the, the POWs. Yeah. But that's an effort that needs to be done everywhere in the world, not just in the United States. And uh, perhaps uh, as much as anywhere, it needs to be done in Russia, um, you know, which yes. to the extent that uh, any country outside of Turkey would have any influence on Azerbaijan, it might be Russia. Um, but it, it's, um, it's a very serious matter. And, um, uh, you know, we should all be treating this with urgency. Thank you. We know, Mr. Khachikian, that a month ago, maybe the Washington-based Armenian Legal Center, led by you, started cooperating with Yerevan-based Center of International and Comparative Law to release Armenian captives. What has the ALC CICL team done recently, and what can we expect? So we entered into we the Armenian Legal Center for Justice and Human Rights. Um, which is an international not-for-profit um, with uh, our, our board has representatives from all over the world, including Armenia. Uh, we entered into a memorandum of understanding with the uh, yeah, Center sure. for International Comparative Law based in Yerevan to work with them to uh, attempt to secure the release of the POWs. Uh, the human rights lawyers at the CICL have had a great deal of success in bringing cases before the European Court for Human Rights uh, previously in, in other Armenian related matters. And um, they had been before our involvement bringing cases before, but they needed more resources to expand their efforts to cover more of the POWs. Uh, it's a very, um, unfortunately, the legal process is very particular and very precise and requires um, very detailed documentation to be able to bring a case. We can't just simply say, um, you know, Ungear Hagop is missing. You need to provide evidence that uh, they were taken by the Azeris that they uh, were taken on a certain day or at a certain point in time. Um, and uh, in order to do that, you need resources to go out and conduct interviews, to gather evidence. And so we have provided those financial resources uh, to the, uh, the center uh, in order to pursue these cases. 
there are approximately 250 identified uh, POWs uh, being held by Azerbaijan. And uh, our desire is to bring every single one of these cases before the European Court for Human Rights and via that process to force Azerbaijan, A, to account for each person, and secondly, to release them. Um, approximately 100 or so cases have been filed. The others are being uh, put together, evidence is being gathered in order to file the cases. And over the next four to six weeks, the rest of the cases will be filed. Every day, the center is filing cases. So it's not uh, a discrete activity, it's a continuous activity. Um, and so over the next several weeks, we expect to file as many, if not all of those cases. Uh, inside the um, European Court for Human Rights, the, um, the court has considered these cases, has um, asked Azerbaijan, has asked each side for a response and has found the, Azer, the Azeri response inadequate and has now referred these cases to what's called the Council of Ministers. Uh, the Council of Ministers uh, is a, you know, a judicial body which will examine each of these cases one by one. And uh, the intent here is by uh, using the judicial process, the legal process to force Azerbaijan to the table and to account for each of these POWs. And also can put sanctions on Azerbaijan, the ministerial body. Well, if, if they don't, uh, if they don't adhere to the findings of the European court, that court can uh, create sanctions and penalties onto Azerbaijan. Fortunately, Azerbaijan is a party to the European Court for Human Rights, as is Armenia. And, uh, you know, we're, we're collected, we're attempting to place as much pressure on Azerbaijan as possible. Having said that, um, I don't think that the legal process is sufficient. Yeah, I, I believe that there needs to be advocacy work. I believe yes. there needs to be political pressure uh, in the major capitals around the world. You know, and I would identify that as being in the United States and Washington, in Europe and Brussels uh, and in uh, Russia to create pressure on Azerbaijan to come to the table. The um, our high tide colleagues in Brussels, I know, are working on this. The, yes. the, the Washington office is working on this. Um, and in, inside of each country, I mean, there are some countries that are typically been more supportive, France being notably one of those countries. Um, but we would also, I'm sure, be pursuing these efforts in Australia as well. But the importance of, of the United States France and Russia are, is that those three countries are the Minsk group countries uh, that are supposed to be overseeing the peace process between Azerbaijan and Armenia and are the logical candidates uh, to be calling the parties to account. And, and in this case, it's obviously calling Azerbaijan to account. So uh, while there should be political pressure everywhere the most important places to focus that activity would be France, uh, Washington, you know, United States, and Russia. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Khachkan, uh, taking into account your great experience in Armenian um, American political life and especially in the field of Armenian advocacy, what is your opinion about US policy on Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and especially on captive issues? And why doesn't Biden's administration try to re-engage the negotiation process and put pro uh, pressure on Aliyev's regime? Well, I think there are a number of, of factors at play here. Um, historically, there's been 
a, uh, a value that the United States has placed on the energy resources of Azerbaijan. Uh, and, like Europe. Excuse me? Like Europe, European yes, Union. Yes, yes. Um, and so uh, the United States has wanted to maintain good relationships with Azerbaijan because of that. Also, the United States has treaded lightly with Turkey uh, because they have viewed Turkey as an important ally in that part of the world and um, has always been very cautious in doing anything to offend Turkey. Yeah, I believe that there has been a shift that's been occurring over the last several years in the United States policy towards Turkey and Azerbaijan. Uh, as Erdogan has become increasingly autocratic and dictatorial, as he has begun, as he has become increasingly cooperative with Russia, uh, as he has uh, cracked down on any dissent, uh, his credibility in the United States has been reduced. Uh, Aliyev has always been autocratic, has always been dictatorial. Um, I'm sure you know he was voted several years ago the most corrupt dictator in the world, yes. um, which is a high standard given some other uh, dictators, uh, you know, in North Korea and in Syria. Um, uh, so I, I believe that um, the United States doesn't look upon Ali uh, with any great favor, but one of the things that has shifted is that in the last five years, as the United States has become the largest producer of energy in the world and has become more energy self-sufficient, uh, it becomes less dependent upon external sources of energy. And so uh, Azerbaijan's energy is less important to the United States. Now, all of this is a gradual process. None of this changes. So that, that's been a set of factors. The other factor is that um, this part of the world, <clears throat> and in particular Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh to us, um, has never been a priority for any American uh, administration. It's only because of the advocacy efforts uh, of the High Tat office in Washington that any attention is paid at all. The uh, Nagorno-Karabakh is the only place in the world that the United States does not recognize, but still provides foreign aid to. And the reason for that is the advocacy efforts in the United States, you know, by the Armenian national committees around the country. Yes. Um, we have as good a, or as knowledgeable a president about Armenian issues as we have had um, in really since the independence of, of Armenia. Um, it would appear, you know, I say this cautiously, that President Biden will be recognizing the Armenian genocide tomorrow. Um, and you know, we would look forward to engaging with his administration and creating a greater focus on a, the humanitarian crisis um, in terms of the, the POWs, but the broad issue of justice for Artsakh, uh, for the seizure of historic Armenian lands by Azerbaijan, supported by Turkey. Um, and and that'll, that's a front and center uh, goal objective uh, for the high tech efforts in the United States. Um, you know, I personally have, uh, for hours on end, spoken to the United States ambassadors uh, to the Minsk group process. And frankly, it's just never been a high priority. Uh, I would hope that given the ongoing disenchantment with Aliyev and with uh, Erdogan, uh, given the humanitarian abuses uh, and ongoing uh, illegal acts by Azerbaijan with respect to the POWs, uh, that the, the United States administration will 
make this a greater priority and will put greater pressure on Aliyev. 